Okay, so today's video we're going over and we're going to do sus rear suspension bushings on a 76-2002 which should be exactly the same as the rest. So the parts you want to make sure you have on hand are going to be you're going to want new rear suspension, you're going to want new tr uh, bushings for the subframe, new trailing arm bushings, and new God, those would be diff hanger bushings, and if your choice is the I Ireland Engineering butt plugs, Go for them, stiffen up your ride a little bit. I thought I'd try them. Okay, so some of the tools you may want are going to be impact sockets, just because it's a little bit easier on a lot of stuff, pulling lug nuts off, things like that. If you have a locking lug nut, the locker broom, just handy. And then box ends, ratchet wrench, and then sockets to do a couple of the small bolts if, you can, if the impact sockets aren't going to do it, which I don't recommend impact sockets, on little bolts. Other than that, Hammer comes in real handy, so does pliers and screwdriver and an impact gun. I sort of jumped in here and got a little ways and remembered I probably should film this. But uh, basically to start out, you want to jack the car up. I did it. Since I'm doing suspension stuff, I jacked it up, put a couple jack stands on the bumper. Nice and simple, gets your wheels off the ground, gets you plenty of room to work. Alright, so the next step here... I sort of jumped in a little bit. I took off the drum and a couple of the brake parts. Best way to do your suspension bushings, which is that lovely guy right there, and this one here, that's your trailing arm bushings. And then right there is your subframe bushing, which we're doing, what I'm doing first, I'm pulling off these trailing arms. I'm gonna pull these trailing arms all the way off, so I'm gonna take off the shock from the bottom mount right there. I'm taking off the e-brake cable right there and then next thing is I'm going to take off the brake line right here probably on the subframe side just because it's easier then from there we're going to take and drop off this whole side and then it'll be exactly the same on the other side and I'll grab some more from over there. Oh, you also have to take and disconnect your any of, the, any of your sway bar parts so here we have a disconnected sway bar link. It looks like it may still be connected, but it's not because we took that bolt out of there. And then to disconnect the parking brake, you also got to take off that bolt right there, which is a little eight millimeter. And there's an eight millimeter on the other side. Mine wasn't rusted on, so chances are yours probably won't either. But just take it easy. And if it looks like it, throw some PV blaster on or something like that, liquid wrench, any of your personal choices. But you pull that guy off. And then we'll pull off brake lines and we'll go from there. Okay, so now we got everything disconnected here. We gotta take and go to the next step. You gotta take and move remove part of the CV axle here. You gotta remove all those bolts, because we're pulling the whole rear trailing arm and it's sort of attached. So your best friend here is gonna be a little Allen wrench. We'll get you a picture of one of those in a minute. What you want to do is you want to clean out each one of these holes here. Make sure it's not messed up. If you don't clean out these little holes, the big problem is you're going to strip them and then they're all going to look like this with vice grips on them because I had one that decided not to let go. So let's go get some tools and we'll start getting going. So the bolts on the axle here, right there, are a little inside six millimeter allens and your best friend is going to get some for a ratchet it's just so much simpler much easier and it goes a hell of a lot faster so now that CV's axle off we can go ahead and move over to taking that big bolt over there off and then the one that's hiding in here off and pretty much once those are off the whole piece should just fall right out of there so subframe bushings. Best way to go about these, there's a nut right there. And then on the car side, there's one hidden up there. So what I do, I put a little I put a 17 millimeter on either one of these guys and then hammer it off, get it off of there, and then just ratchet them off all the way. And then somehow this guy's gonna come down and this will slip right off of that shaft in there. There we go, one trailing arm off. Biggest thing I noticed pulling this one off is on this inner bolt here where it takes 
it, it mounts right here and it's pretty tight to this guy. I took the bolt off the bottom here and then loosened this guy and swung it around so I could drop this guy a couple inches and get a wrench in there. Other than that, no real problems. It's pretty simple to pull on this side off. Other side is going to be exactly the same, so we're going to take and start showing you how to pull off these bad boys, little subframe bushings. So subframe bushings. Best way to go about these, there's a nut right there. And then on the car side, there's one hidden up there. So what I do, I put a little, I put a 17 millimeter on either one of these guys and then hammer it off, get it off of there. And then just ratchet them off all the way. And then somehow, this guy's going to come down and this will slip right off of that shaft in there. So the next step to get these guys off is they're going to have to come down that shaft, right? Well, so you got to take the other side off. Did that already. But I right, say so we got to take the other, all the bolts on the other side off and on the back side back there. But the next thing to do to make this easier is pretty much you're going to have to drop the whole subframe to do these guys. And you're going to have to get to these at some point up here. Because there's the there's the uh, the bushings for the differential. You're gonna have to do those anyway because they come in your island engineering kit. So the best way to pull these guys is pull them. You can either take you have to take both sets off. You either pull these bolts off or those two bolts off. Take your pick. It has to come down either way. So we're gonna pull those off next and go from there. So this next part here only applies if you have these island engineering subframe butt plugs, pretty much because they have to be put inside with inside there but the key is you can see that there's the way these guys are built let me see if I can get a good light the way these guys are built one side has a protrusion that side and one side's pretty flush so the way these guys work is you want to grab the little butt plug and you're going to take and put it just in there as far as you can and the new ones have a little spot on them so what you're going to have to do is get your vise out and do something like this. Just take and open up your vise. And just squeeze. Just like that. And we'll go in and break those, that little crack there. You heard? Just breaking those little teeny molding parts which is totally fine nothing wrong with it there we go and there's the other one and it goes right on in and then it'll come out flush just like that all right so the next part is we gotta take and put that part we just put that little butt plug into onto here but the key is there's the side that's up and there's the side that's down and one of them has that, like we were talking about earlier, that protrusion protrusion side goes up so we're going to do, I'm going to put the camera down here let me see if I can get a good angle for you just like that and we're going to take, put the new bolts in or the, actually the, if you're reusing the bolts put those guys in slips it's right on in there and then on the back side you're gonna put your little bolts back on in there with a little bit of blue Loctite yes it isn't a red bottle but just put a little bit of Loctite on there for safety and then tighten them on down something I'm gonna do here is since these guys are just sort of pressed in I'm going to weld them on there because they spin, at least one of them. This one here was spinning when I took it off. It doesn't help I use impact tools to pull these because it's a heck of a lot faster. But if you don't use impact tools, they might stay on. But either way, I'm going to weld them on. You can too if you like. It just keeps it so they don't go anywhere as easily. And if they do start spinning you can't get them off enough, well, at least you can get them off if they're welded on.
So I'm doing the next part on here. So I'm taking the hacksaw here, that guy, and then putting it in here and cutting a line. So I'll show you how it comes out after I put the hacksaw through and cut it. Alright, so you can sort of see there. Cut all the way through that metal without trying to hit that outer ring here. One that's just right there. Didn't want to hit that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take my punch over here as soon as it focuses. We're going to take that punch and we're going to punch this out from one side to the other. So let's see if I can set up the camera so you can watch. we go just like that you got one old bushing and two holes so the next thing we'll do is we'll start pulling out the the new bushings out of here and we'll lube them up so here's what the new ones look like we split in half and they're half and half looking like that and you get this this prothane grease which is actually just pretty much it's a silica it's a silicon grease it's the same thing as the uh, brake stuff, brake lubricant, so if you run out, you can get brake lubricant. But the big thing is, take and slather a lot of this onto there. Uh, as you can see, I took and slathered it on really nicely on there, on that shaft, and then just around in this area on both of them. So we're going to go ahead and put those bad boys in now. So you grab just one of these guys. I usually like to do it from the bottom first. And then... They just, they just push them on in. They slip on in there. Or sort of slip. There we go. They just slip in just like that. And then the top one just presses in as well. You do the same thing on the other side. And they should look just like that. Pretty flush. Have a little bit of room on the top. You'll do the same thing in that hole. Greasing these up. And you're set to go. There we go, and just like that, you're set to go with both of them. One on each spot. Nice and set on the inside there. Welded on so you aren't going to have anything spin on you. Let's go ahead and take a lack over back to the car here. Mind my messy work zone. Got both spots here. So we're going to take my oh, back under the car. You can see where everything was attached. I think this time I'm going to attach it from the top attach the two top mounts and then attach the bottom on here and cinch it on up. There we go. We'll get you a little bit of video when we're done. There we go. There's it back in. Got those bought, bought on, put on there. Mounts on the bottom tightened Why down. My truck, Good to my go. Way. So now we're to the point we need to take these old bushings out. You can see I've already done it on this side. 
we need to do it over here now. So best way to do it, pretty much, because these you can either press them out, which you got to find a way to do it, which isn't the easiest, but it can be done. You can either press them out, or what we do is we'll take and we'll use that guy right there. Keep a fire extinguisher handy. And we're going to heat up that metal collar right in the middle until it's going to take and melt everything around it and then slide it on out. So here we go. go once you get warm enough that sleeve should just take and tap right out of there just like that so once the sleeves out you got that flaming metal you get that smoking metal sleeve there you're gonna take and you stick stick the screwdriver in and they're halved in there so all you gotta do stick it in enough and then just Pry it right on out, and boom, you got one side all the way out. You got one ready to go for your new polyurethane bushings. So next, we got to take and lube these guys, lube these guys up just like the rear diff hangers. You take and use this prothane, lube that whole guy, lube right there, and lube right there on these guys. And they'll go in looking just like that. Big key thing though, as you can see here, there's a fat side and a skinny side. The fat side is going to go towards the differential and towards the hub. It's the two outsides there. So that's where they're facing. That's very important so they make it fit. So we're going to go ahead and lube these guys up and we'll put them in. Okay, so putting this whole thing back together is exactly opposite of the way we took it out. We're going to put both those two bolts back in their shackles there. We're going to rehang it. We're going to put the drive shaft back on. Get the, sub, get the sway bar mount put back on. Get our shock put back on there. Our brake and our brake line. And get all that put back together. And once we're done with that, we're going to take and mount this guy, put the put that trailing arm, not trailing arm, but the uh, whatever the heck the name of that thing is, the, uh, that support rod, 
that goes all the way up here. Put that on, attach it, cinch that down, do that on both sides, and then do I'm gonna do the same thing with putting this hole of the trailing arm back in over here, do the same thing on the opposite side. Alright, now that we got it all back together here, we got the drums back on, all these guys in there. Got brake lines hooked up, both of these tightened down, new bushings on, all the way bolted down. Got the CV axle bolted in all the way, sway bar bolted on, new bushings on the differential, same thing on the other side. All bolted in, ready to go. Pretty much, you just want to go over and check your work, make sure there's any missing bolts, make sure everything's tightened down nice and hard, make sure you lock tight when you go through. Put that straight, lock tight these bolts or the uh, CV axle bolts, those are important to lock tight because one of those falls off, it's going to spin and start gouging up everything up here in the road. And yeah, just bad idea. So, lock tight your CV axle bolts, very good thing. If you have the later style, you can somewhat fit a bolt on the back of there. It really is up to you on those. Other than that, take and adjust your brakes with that adjuster there until they just rub a little bit. There's another adjuster just on the other side of the cow, on the other side of the drum, which is hidden back here. So adjust those both out so it just has a little bit of resistance when it turns. And then you want to bleed the brake with that bleeder right there, bleed all the, so the air's all out, and you're set to go.